Hello, fellow hacker, halted cybersecurity enthusiasts. My name is Phil Lopez. I served in the Navy for 31 years, and I'm the Director of Military and Government Affairs for EC Council. At this time, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome Mr. Alex Holden, the founder and CISO of Hold Security LLC, one of the biggest names in the field. Mr. Holden researches cyber criminals to help build stronger defenses against cyber attacks. And today he's speaking on what's lurking in the dark. Sounds interesting. It's an in-depth look into the dark web. Thank you, Alex. I'm making you the presenter right now and you'll have control. Give me one second. Excellent. So, well, hello and welcome everybody. We are going to be talking today about the dark web. Why am I talking about the dark web uh, with this uh, very distinct Russian accent? Um, well, I'm going to tell you a very interesting and fascinating story today. It's not only about technology, it's also about humans. So uh, sit back, listen, and let me uh, tell you this interesting story. So who, who am I? Uh, I'm an IT for professional first and first of all. Um, I do have a Russian accent. This is uh, my ethical background, even though I'm not from exactly from Russia. I left Soviet Union um, back in the 1980s, and um, I'm actually from the region of Ukraine. But I've never been to Russia, never been to uh, Ukraine, I've been in a country that no longer exists. So from that perspective, I do consider myself Ukrainian, but if you call me Russians, uh, Russian, it's okay, because uh, I reserve the right uh, to call you Canadians. Um, most of you guys are gonna laugh, I'm gonna cry, you know, it's all good. But I, I grew up not in cybersecurity as much as IT um, initially, and then when IT became more segregated, more um, uh, com complex, I actually went in cybersecurity. I did a lot of research in cybersecurity, and in order to um, get further in what I was doing, I start actually evolving. And in this evolution, for me, it was not only learning about defenses, not only uh, understanding technology, but also want to understand how the dark web works. The reason for that is that when I actually start looking around and start uh, understanding cybercrime, I grew up, I evolved, into trying to stop not only the uh, attacks, not only zeros and ones coming at my firewalls, but also figuring out who are the bad guys behind these type of attacks. So the reason I go out on the dark web every single day is to figure out what the bad guys are doing, how they're doing it, and what are their next steps. So a little bit about the dark web, what the heck that is. And uh, the dark web is very complicated component. It's not a place, it's more of a com combination of hidden channels. It's hidden channels of communication, it's combination of hidden identities, and it's a way for the bad guys to weaponize and abuse certain things. It's also a component of hidden marketplace. So with all these complexities, I actually want to give you a story about how we go out on dark web and communicate with the bad guys. We set up a goal to go out and um, figure out how the bad guys are operating. So in this particular case that I'm gonna be talking about, I'm gonna be bringing a story about how we uh, spread the word once on the dark web that we are running this elite um, IT organization that helps uh, the bad guys with uh, their technology. Because the bad guys are good at some things, but they're not always good in every single technology out there. So spreading the word about um, this elite IT organization does help. We are sitting back and waiting. So first uh, person um, who reaches out um, you know, was uh, this Russian speaking um, uh, person, and uh, we don't know if he's a bad guy or not even though he's replying to um, uh, dark web advertising. So he uh, asks us about, um, you know, he says hello, and uh, we obviously reply in Russian, uh, because um, that's a language that he's using, we can search for your pleasure uh, below. Um, so how can I help you? The person says, hey, um, you know, I was recommended to you, uh, to you, to talk to you. And at that point, when the person sa says that um, he uh, came from a reference, Instead of letting the person ask us questions about who we are and what we do, 
we are initiating this multi-factor authentication process. We start asking him lots of different questions because we can't trust just anybody. So we're going to be asking him a lot of interesting questions. If he, if he can't answer the questions, who um, recommended him and how, we're not going to be talking to him. We confuse him so much that he forgets to, forgets to ask who the heck we are and asking for our credentials. So multi-factor authentication on this level does work. So after that's completed, he reaches out and says, hey, you know, I'm having problems with my PHP. It's not running well on my server. How can I help? So the response is obviously uh, normal. Let us take a look and see what's going on. Um, so at that point, um, you know, when we start asking more questions, he opens uh, his uh, um, himself up and says, I'm actually running a botnet controller and here's information that, that you need. So I'm using a story obviously that was uh, extremely successful and good. It doesn't happen every time, but this person um, discloses the information right away. And now I know, we know he's running about that controller and we can see that uh, our artist starts, um, you know, classified him as a really, really bad guy. So start uh, drawing a hood on the top of his um, silhouette. So that's uh, how we um, uh, know that all the bad guys. Uh, and uh, we also got information for login to his system. Very little effort, very little, um, you know, in this very interesting approach. But since he already gave us access to uh, his button controller, we can try a small celebration, just the beginning, because uh, we did not go very far just, just yet. So from our perspective, the work is just beginning. We ask a couple questions, important questions, maybe interesting questions. Do you have backups? Um, and in this case, the guy says, no, you, I don't have it. Can you do it uh, for me? And of course, it's not a problem. We'll be happy to do backups. So even off-site backups, we'll keep those backups for you as long as uh, you want us. Um, so from, uh, you know, the next step is actually do what we are saying uh, we're doing. Why we're uh, doing what we're saying we're doing? Just to prove that uh, the process is working. So you never know who's watching. So you have to actually follow through steps that you are advertising because otherwise you get kicked out of the system and blocked forever. No harm, no foul. But uh, in many cases, be careful and following the script gets you much further. So our response, obviously, not that we're going to help you with PHP, but we're going to criticize. We're going to say, hey, you know, the system is relatively poor quality. Uh, I need to do more research. I need to show it to uh, some experts. Uh, the bad guy asks, you know, who's that exactly? And we um, the reply saying, well, obviously it's going to be a couple of cybersecurity um, experts and um, guys from law enforcement. By the way, if you put some smiley faces at the end of any sentence, it's not being taken seriously, even though you be, can be completely truthful. So the bad guy says, yes, go ahead. It only if you do this quickly. So this is um, part of a story, a part of a conversation. Now, um, let's talk about the technical side of it. So what do you do when you, uh, you get the room? So never assume that uh, you are there by yourself and nobody's watching. In many cases, we see the bad guys watching us uh, through various tools, various approaches. So we actually need to uh, do certain things to act officially. First, Obviously, that bad, bad, bad idea to use your own computer to log into anywhere. So we have uh, access to a number of uh, cloud computers, both proofs, from which we can actually start uh, our initial connection. Then we don't need to turn it, to turn things off. So you know, turn off the history file and a whole bunch of other things to make sure that our work is not uh, being spied on or interrupted. And the bad guy asks why I'm doing that. Well, I can be paranoid as well, plus I have my own tools. So don't ask me why I'm trying to be careful. You can't trust just anybody. Don't go directly for the log files. Uh, don't go for other components. Uh, back them up, yes. Uh, but uh, some of the bad guys sit there and watch uh, terminals, files, and a whole bunch of other things even if you turn uh, some of those components off. So make sure that you don't destroy anything. Um, but you need to create some noise by running diagnostics. You know, run some basic commands, some complex commands, uh, leave uh, uh, top command running and stuff like that. They need to see that you are doing some work. 
plus um, you know you need to start looking around once to figure out what the heck um, the system is and what is it doing you're being asked to fix very very specific things so we're going to be go going at that but we're going to be also looking around and obviously perform quick backup um, backups um, you know as uh, i said you know kind of important uh, backups um, with consent even better because uh, then nobody can ask you a question why you have that information. So uh, running backups on uh, important things, uh, sometimes depending what's on the system, definitely works and move them off site. Then let's start working around. So uh, there is a, a web server out there, so we're gonna be uh, paying attention to that and um, getting on the web server, looking into interesting directories the public side probably would be the most interesting first. And then uh, look, let's look at uh, login processes to this particular website. We obviously can access through, toward this website to see what it looks like from outside, but once you're inside, it may not be, even be applicable. So login process is interesting, but we can look at um, the uh, libraries that includes. So once we start getting into uh, more into this, um, you get more and more into connectivity. Now, we figured out uh, the uh, username and password for this uh, particular uh, SQL database. And again, I'm happy to show you the, these things because the, the bad guy already, um, you know, done a lot of stupid things. And if he reuses uh, his passwords anywhere else, you know, do that. Yeah. Uh, now we can get his crypto keys, uh, secret keys, um, download everything that we may need to decrypt the data later on. Now, with SQL access, we can get into a SQL database. We can um, get information uh, about which database uh, tends to be interesting. Start looking at database structures and then finding out that um, besides uh, the button that on the server that Rocky running, he's actually also running a website that uh, has a backend with um, a peddling uh, stolen credit cards. So let's look deeper. Let's see what, had, uh, what the front page looks like. Tony Montana was a login, was captured. Well, he needs to be protected against uh, everybody. Um, this is also known as a very fun website, Trump Dumps, uh, that uh, was active um, at the time of the conversation. And this person was also known to law enforcement uh, as um, uh, Tony Montana uh, in a couple of indictments. So we were working um, in the figuring out things for really, really bad guy. So these are how things evolve, how we figure out uh, some of these things and bring this uh, to attention. This is uh, not only being on the dark web, but using proactive offenses uh, against uh, the bad guy to figure out what they are to. So who are our ad adversaries? Most of the bad guys out there on the dark web do these things for profit. They're definitely concentrating on making money off um, other people's uh, misfortune of being happy. Some bad guys do it for fame. They want to have their name known to everybody. There are quite a few bad guys who are doing it for cause. Whether the cause you agree with or disagree with, these um, combination of things uh, do have, tend to happen and uh, do cause uh, quite a bit of harm because the cause is uh, something that driving the bad guys forward. Some bad guys doing it for their country, or some even do corporate espionage for their companies. So uh, some of it is um, definitely for um, the higher cause, so to speak, if you ask these guys. And obviously, uh, there's quite a bit of uh, cybercrime that happens out of revenge. And revenge is uh, probably the most um, uh, terrible uh, way, destructive way of um, attacks that we have ever seen. So different adversaries, different approaches. Uh, but um, we go out on the dark web, exploring the dark web components, not only on the forums, but really much deeper to meet cyber criminals, make them into uh, our friends, so to speak, to get their secrets. The idea is not only technology, but also to figure out who you um, can be a friend and who can tell you their secrets. It's not really a Tinder to a degree because we don't use a romantic approach or anything like that. We have um, a lot of different analysts and whole security is actually well known for having, um, being one of those workplaces that 
we have more than 50 percent uh, women working for us yet none of the uh, women are allowed to play female roles because we don't want to entice enticement does not work long term we want to create a kinship a friendship that would be much more lasting and that would be much better approach to figure out how the bad guys work so i'm going to tell you a story i'm going to tell you a story about several bad guys really really bad guys and how they came to fame and infamy and uh what the uh is happening to them right now so first meet uh Rina shabbat or rich uh this person back in 2013 breached target uh systems and he wrote kartoha pos which uh, really took um, our retail uh, giant target to its knees. Renat was actually looking for a job, a legitimate job on the internet, on the site called freelancer.ru. And he was asking for 12 bucks an hour uh, wages equivalent um, in back in 2012. He couldn't find a job for 12 bucks an hour. So we went in, into cybercrime. But he went in the direction of cybercrime. He actually started um, uh, communicating with uh, members of uh, the hacker community, the cyber criminal community, and actually connected um, to the bad guys who asked him to write them over. Uh, this, his story is rather sad because he was not making much more money as a cyber criminal, uh, and he really failed to um, uh, market his skills, even though they were quite significant um, about his approach. Now meet uh, another um, uh, person. This is Max Donico. He is also known as Tessa 88. Tessa 88, if those of you um, remember in summer of uh, 2016, was holding the entire world hostage with disclosing the major breaches of the time. In fact, summer of 2016 was called the time of mega breaches, where breaches such as MySpace, LinkedIn, Dropbox and then Yahoo were disclosed all by this person. So we tried to figure out who this person is, you know, how this young man um, had been uh, around for so long that um, committed so many different crimes. So we investigated, we investigated him, we investigated his women, and we investigated obviously his pets. Um, and uh, to get a full picture about so his social background, his uh, identity, to figure out everything that uh, been happening to him at the time drew a very good, very solid picture. We figure out um, his uh, background because um, he used to wear um, a mask even before uh, COVID. That's, uh, I think, 2014 image. He used to uh, wear the anonymous mask. And then he also had this um, brandishing this uh, uh, ID from a, a Russian um, uh, uh, no, uh, law enforcement. Uh, uh, so he uh, was a man of multiple mysteries. As we make made friends with him, we figure out even details about his old drug routes, as he was uh, buying and selling drugs in his use. We figure out his background as he got arrested at the uh, age of uh, 24 and put in uh, Russian prison. For several years, he uh, served two sentences, um, which uh, really broke him as a person. His, his social media, he posts this picture and um, uh, um, his poetry in Russian. Um, we did a crude translation of uh, his uh, poetry, showing the mental distress um, of his um, uh, set of mind as he was going to prison being afraid that um, his uh, life is uh, rather over. The prison broke him. He did make the right connections there, but unfortunately uh, to him, he was also diagnosed with brain cancer um, in a uh, search stage, and he was released from Russian prison because of his health. While in prison, he made uh, good friends people who taught him about access uh, to certain components, people who introduced him to other uh, cyber criminals. And when he was out, he became the screen of cyber crime, bringing one data dump after the other, making sure that he's profiting and selling them through his uh, counterparts in Canada and in Russia for significant amounts of money. He held everybody uh, hostage 
dumping this data, lying about certain data. And when it came to finding the Yahoo data, he um, was uh, able to tell us uh, about this and said, hey, this is the data that uh, I uh, became available to him. He showed us a real sample of data on June 1st of um, uh, 2016. And when we looked at this, we saw a dead company walking. This was real sample of the data. Yet, Tessa 88, Maxim never got the full set of data. In um, August of uh, 2016, he finally puts up Yahoo's data on sale. He puts up this eight gigabyte uh, uh, file called Yahoo Full SQL RAR. But the data in there was fake. He made 18 bitcoins, which was not that much at the time. Um, but uh, he was um, peddling uh, fake data based on the really real sample. His tail, uh, Maxim Bonnikov tail, is definitely a sad one. A person afflicted with a terrible disease. A person who only knows how to do criminal activities. A person who is deeply disturbed and distressed was given a pressure in the cyber criminal world. He wasted that. He used it um, as much as he used uh, drugs, recreational drugs and very heavy drugs to kill his pain. He didn't know how to earn money in any other ways. He was only used to crime. His health deteriorated. His uh, mental condition did as well. And unfortunately, this um, person who did quite a bit of damage to the society didn't fare well, nor did he profit greatly from his exports. Another person that we learned just recently in June uh, was uh, something that we've been tracking for nearly a year. Ala Vite uh, is the first person indicted and arrested from the Tripad gang. So I'm gonna tell you a story of Ala Vite, another most unusual criminal who is um, um, really being uh, currently uh, processed by the U.S. legal system, being tried in uh, Ohio courts for her crimes. So meet Ala Vite. Her maiden name is Ala Klimova, and she was born in Russia, in Rostov and Don, back in 1965. She was born in Soviet Union, but she never lived uh, in Russia. Um, she, uh, uh, moved um, to go to school to Latvia, Riga, where she studied applied mathematics from 1983 to 1988. She has two kids uh, that, that, uh, from her first marriage, or at least that what her passwords are telling us. By discovering her uh, information, we also were able to map out some things that would, would be very difficult to identify. According to her social media profiles, she does not smoke or drink alcohol. In the 90s, when she graduated um, uh, from university and uh, she living in uh, Riga, she uh, became a sales manager and then secondary education teacher um, in teaching math. So, you know, from as a cyber criminal, she was not a, a future cyber criminal. She was not a prime uh, target or prime person. She was just a regular person and only in 2000s. Being already in her late 30s, early 40s, she starts pursuing a uh, uh, career in uh, the, uh, software development. She does not go into web development immediately. For eight years of her career, she's working for a Dutch company um, doing C++ development. So she's not even getting into some of the components um, that uh, she would become infamous for. And then uh, in 2007, she gets married to a Latvian uh, Max Witte, we're assuming that um, that's his name because of her social media. She is uh, very uh, personally uh, refers to somebody uh, named Max, but uh, she never uh, states that it's her husband in pictures as you would see that um, you know, there is a person present. And at the same time, she moves to Amsterdam uh, to um, uh, work uh, closer to her com um, company. And she spends uh, more, uh, another decade or nearly a decade uh, out in Europe. 
she uh, travels around the world, and uh, in her travels around the world, she uh, is um, uh, being very uh, descriptive in social media, uh, posting a lot of pictures, and um, eventually, sometimes after 2014, and thinking even later than that, she is um, settling in Suriname, out uh, of all places. Possibly, uh, the little Dutch there is a primary language, so very likely she been uh, uh, there uh, because of the convenience, uh, and she continues um, her life out there. As a professional, she became uh, a developer with a sex for learning. She makes a lot of social media uh, statements about how much she enjoys being a developer. She starts um, her uh, software development career as a um, in web development only in her late 40s. And she writes very often she, that she overcame a lot of barriers, including uh, age and gender discrimination, which is very common in the Russian community. She, in fact, writes that even her family discouraged her from going into uh, software development because she's a woman and she is older. And she thinks very few people who actually stood by her and um, uh, encouraged her to succeed. She is an effective communicator and she is an effective developer, a programmer. She um, attends a number of um, classes online, leaving very detailed feedback. She asks very intelligent uh, software questions and uh, also uh, provides responses to other folks with less experience than her. In 2012, she is becoming a freelancer um, and uh, creating her website. Um, out there to uh, market her services. She is specifically uh, catering to the Russian community, even though she's speaking English um, quite well in her own words, she is fluent. Um, she gets very good reviews for her work. And um, she on her site, alavite.nl, she is um, much more um, uh, pr proud, I guess, um, to show her current work. As a freelancer, she goes to the same site that uh, um, Rina Shabai went to, uh, also in 2012, to advertise her skills. As a developer, she actually um, advertises her work as a developer in um, over 20 Russian-speaking uh, freelancing sites. Yet she's still having issues finding new projects. And she is even commenting that some of uh, the downtime between projects is really impacting her. She is not um, able to sit just still, but uh, she wants a um, consistent um, way to get paid. Also, she had uh, complained about another situation where one project runs longer and she needs to pull up double shifts. Um, to work on the current project and picking up the new project that she already committed to. She uh, is struggling as a developer or as a freelancer, mostly because of logistics and project load, but then she gets picked up by a very infamous TrickBot game. TrickBot game is actually known to approach uh, aspiring developers in the Russian community, offering them jobs, going through uh, some uh, testing of a person to figure out if they're really um, capable of working for the game and then initiating them into the game. Within the game, we know that Ala Vite uh, actually uh, developed components for Node.js framework. She used her C experience to develop and deploy Mover, and she was also designed um, among the designers and implement, implement, implementers of something called Enigma ransomware uh, software. She didn't write it whole, um, but she wrote uh, some portions of it. Enigma later became uh, something we now know as a Diablo uh, ransomware. But Ala uh was not a great uh, OPSEC person. In fact, she made so many different mistakes about her operational security uh, background that um, she uh, is cannot be called a great uh, security person. In fact, um, you know, not to uh, belittle her technical skills or person skills, she is uh, one of those stupid cyber criminals out there. 
Uh, first of all, initially when she joined the game, she uses the nickname Ava Uh Then um, somebody asks her, like, you know, why are you using this uh, nickname? She tells them, hey, that's my name. They tell her, no, 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 you should be anonymous, change it. So uh, she takes the next logical thing, nickname, um, name of her husband. Next, she uh, was in the game, eagerly identified her name uh, and uh, age, I'm sorry, and gender, never her age. She, um, in the Russian language, uh, the uh, gender um, uh, pronouns are um, very easy to identify. You can't really uh, speak a couple sentences without identifying yourself as male or female speaker or writing, writer. So she always asks people to call her by her first name, Ava, and she always uh, writes as a, um, you know, from a female's perspective, which is uh, normal within Russian language. She's also very social and oversharing. She tells stories about her home country. Um, she um, uh, tells other things about herself. But that doesn't make her a bad uh, person or a sort of cyber criminal. This does. On uh, Christmas Eve of 2019, Ala Vita infects her personal computer with her butt malware. I don't know if it was for research or just a wrong click, but I'm showing you a sample directly from the TrickBot uh, data dump that actually identifies Ala Vita uh, going to a whole bunch of um, sites. In fact, over 160 sites with um, uh, that she visited with credentials got dumped from her computer, including even her own um, site, alavita.nl. You can see cpanalavita.nl with um, her username, be removed passwords, um, you know, to protect her privacy if such things still exist. But nevertheless, you can see that uh, she tends to do really unpredictable, easy things. She also um, uh, um, even hosted uh, Mover just three weeks later in uh, 2020. Uh, she uh, hosts, um, starts hosting Mover roles for three, but uh, um, agents Mover uh, of her site, alavita.nl. Not as a best developer, uh, she uh, made a number of uh, uh, errors in her code which actually allowed, as a combination, for law enforcement to figure out who she was. And in on February 5th of this year, she was either extradited or detained um, from Suriname to Miami. We don't know exactly how she was arrested, but we know that on uh, February 5th, she was detained and on February 6th, she was formally charged in Miami and transported to, uh, um, uh, to Ohio, where there was a case against her already pending. So that story of our Vita is extremely interesting and very fascinating as she is um, uh, moving through her life with a goal to be the best developer. She, in fact, talks about her dream where she wanted to be the best developer ever who solves the most complex software problems who uh, flies to her uh, clients from country to country, solving their issues and helping them to write better software. Unfortunately, uh, she, her last flight to the uh, United States and was in the United States uh, to a jail uh, where she is awaiting um, her uh, trial is um, the end of how her criminal career came to the end. So does cybercrime pay? We talked in the beginning of um, these three people's journey uh, that uh, Rina Shabayev was seeking 12 bucks an hour as a developer, and he couldn't get that in order to um, uh, maintain himself. So he went into cybercrime. Alavite is a part of um, Trickbot game. She's the only member arrested she participated in the most heinous parts of TrickBot operations. The infection, uh, data, stolen data um, uh, processing, and ransomware components of the game. Did Alavite profit from it? Because Rina Shabai didn't. And the answer is no. Resounding no. She is a cyber criminal 
who was working for $1,500 a month for the most powerful and probably the richest gang right now. She was exploited by that. Not that she didn't know what she was doing. She definitely knew. But she was content as writing good code for her project that was consistent. It was paying her um, wages. And she was enjoying what she was doing. For that, she was arrested. And uh, probably rightfully so. Yet her tale, the tale of Rina Shabaya, tale of uh, Max Danko, is quite sad. One. I go out on the dark web every day. I go out to learn about cyber criminals. I go out on the dark web to stop the bad guys. These are the bad guys we end up stopping. Unfortunately, the heads of um, these criminal organizations, the guys, uh, bad guys who keep millions or some billions of dollars never get caught. They sit in Russia, they sit in China, they sit far away from law enforcement and they enjoy good life. The cyber crime to me is combination of uh, people in the, the trenches, the bad guys who are working for really bad guys, stopping them, subverting them, getting them on the right path before it's too late is part of stopping cybercrime overall, then the real bad guys would have their armies diminished and maybe move somewhere else. This was all for today's journey into the dark web, but I think we have uh, maybe a couple more minutes so I can answer questions if you have. So thank you. And we do have some questions. Um, they're asking if there's a way uh, possible for this slide deck of yours PDF to be shared. Absolutely. Um, my contact information is um, in, in here on the slide and uh, shoot me an email and I'll be able to do this. Uh, if uh, you guys have an ability to share my slide deck, I can send this um, to uh, have recalled at the staff as well. Okay, thank you. Um, we have one question from Gabrielle. If I use a clean new operating system without logs or anything with personal data, should I take care um, about about others devices maybe using my network? Having a clean system definitely helps because the bad guys would be um, uh, trying to exploit things that are left around that are um, not patched or vulnerable. That's a part of it. So having a clean uh, built system uh, definitely helps, but it also does not substitute to have the rest of the environment secure because uh, if other local computers uh, may be vulnerable, you can move um, the problem from one system to another. Your credentials and way you're accessing that system also quite important because if you're reusing your passwords that would be a big big problem and the last thing is um, awareness of what you're doing in the system if you click on the wrong link if you open the wrong email if you disclose certain information you are uh, still using a new system but you're doing this um not uh, with the greatest care just imagine if you get a brand new car it does not um, excuse you for uh, driving um, carelessly. Uh, it's not likely, a new car not likely to die on you, but um, uh, to technical problems, but uh, best practices definitely followed after you build a clean system. Okay, thank you. Next question, are there any free applications that you might recommend that would allow me to identify or scan um, for my company and my own PII information like driver's license and passport that might be out on the dark web? There are several resources on the internet where you can go and look for uh, information. <clears throat> Obviously, some of them would require uh, for you to um, identify yourself as a holder of the data, as a represent legal representative of your company to get that information. The other places go obviously on the dark web itself. You need to be trained. You need to step carefully uh, as you go out there and as you, uh, maybe looking at some data, downloading some data that may be relevant to your company. 
that's also a way to do this but again you know you need to put your training wheels on first and then make first steps and then go, go further and obviously there are companies um, you know that can help you with uh, research um, and um, finding things so on, uh, um, uh, uh, from your company and your employees on the dark web we are one of those companies and we know how complicated some of these things are and we may be able to find sort of things that um, an average user on the dark web cannot. Thank you. What is the current status of the TrickBot gang? The TrickBot gang is prospering. They um, had a couple of votes dealt to them over the past year, but they can fight back. Address of uh, Alavite didn't go unnoticed. But the bad guys shrugged it off. The arrest of Imatech um, um, gang members, which is affiliated gang, was used by as an excuse for the Trumpet gang to take over Imatech's operations and run that gang for, for themselves. So the gang is prospering. Unfortunately, <laughs> they are getting bigger and bigger. They've been in the recruiting mode. They had a huge multi million dollar budget to get themselves stronger over the course of summer, and they are um, prospering uh, with their ransomware brands, uh, Riot, um, the relationship with Conti Gang, as well as uh, their new uh, Diablo ransomware. Okay, thank you. Does two-factor authentication and digital signatures stop cyber criminals from accessing my server? It won't stop but it would make uh, hack more, much more difficult for, for them to get in. Uh, Two-factor authentication has its own flaws. It still can be um, bypassed through social engineering uh, or solicited uh, through social engineering, but it changes the uh, ratio of cybercrime. When there is a normal attack from the bad guys with one-factor authentication, they can brute force things. They can do, one person can do millions or billions of requests against your system. When you have two-factor authentication, that ratio drops from one to one, one to few. And that attack surface changes, so the bad guys need to try much, much more harder, which most of them don't. So two-factor authentication is great. Okay, then uh, we have time for one last question. Would a virtual machine within a virtual machine be the best way to access the dark web? A virtual machine is recommended, but always keep in mind what you are trying to do and who you want to hide it from. My suggestion is to run virtual machine and uh, running Tor or a uh, tool that you need to get to the dark web. Many people suggest VPN, many people suggest other tools, but keep in mind who you're trying to hide from. When you're using a Tor browser, if you're using it uh, uh, sufficiently, the bad guys can't tell who you are. If you are using VPN, law enforcement can tell who you are. So uh, from that perspective, we are suggesting for people who should not be afraid of law enforcement uh, looking for the bad guys and not hide, hiding a lot of things, their activities, um, to use Tor on a virtual machine but um, avoiding using VPN or anything like that because some of your activities may be misinterpreted as malicious. So we are trying to hide from the bad guys. We don't want them to know who we are. But um, folks that on our side, I rather identify myself uh, personally because it makes more or less makes uh, us a community of good guys trying to defeat the bad guys. Understood. Okay, Alex, well, well thank you very much. We still have several questions that look really good. Um, is it okay if uh, they get a hold of you at the uh, information that you have on your slide right now? Absolutely. That's why it's there. Thank you very much, everybody. It was a pleasure. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, I found this fascinating. I appreciate your talk very much, and I'll close it for now. Thank you so much.